Hi there. It's been a while since I made a video. All sorts of reasons, but uh, right now you catch me just hand placing um, the a few components on the DCC module. So I uh, haven't made these for a month or so and um, stock's getting low so we'll just replenish that. It's been an absolute hell of a couple of weeks. Uh, I think I've been run ragged with equipment failing. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. Right now I've got uh, a couple of large panels on the laser. One's just finished. One's on. That's a 900 millimeter panel. Um, as I shoot this, film this, it's on the run up to the Maybank holiday, so I'll get it painted over the weekend and uh, shipped next week. But uh, that one was cut close to the wire. And what happened was the. Um, the, I last month I fitted a new tube to the laser and then I started servicing it and doing various bits and I noticed a belt was worn so I ordered a new belt and new pulleys and fitted that great and then the belt rode up a pulley right at the end of a panel so that was wasted so I thought in the end, um, what the heck, I'll get, um, I'll get the laser company out to service the machine. And whilst I was at it, I ordered uh, or had on standby in case it was needed a new set of mirrors as well. It turns out they were needed. They were absorbing over 40% of the power. Um, oh. Even though I cleaned them, I think when I fitted the new laser I then went around the alignment process you do with a piece of paper and uh, I think the flames off the paper just pitted the mirrors and that was the, the final straw so now it has um, new pulleys again new mirrors it didn't have a new lens that was uh, apparently that was the <laughs> that was the only bit that was good and it's working like a charm so I'm very pleased with it and it's been running. They, they guys came yesterday. They were here about three and a half hours, two of them. Uh, I last saw them about two years ago. And um, the machine is earning its keep again. So that's good. I've got, what have I got? I've got one panel just come off it, one panel on and another one to go on. Uh, hopefully today I'll get them all done today the 900 millimeter long panel it's um, what is it it's 220 mil high I think or 240 240 mil high so that's probably five hours on the laser and then after that there's an A4 one that's quite quite an easy job in terms of laser cutting so I hope I can get that one done today and not run the machine tomorrow. Um, we've also had a massive week, week and a half. Actually, no, what would it be? With 10 days we've been making buttons. I'll show you them after, I'll take the camera down. Um, the PCB for a button, it, it's, if you can, this is a remote button, but it's same idea. Uh, you get a, a PCB, in fact, let's find one. Hang on, talk amongst yourselves. Uh, there we go. So here's a blank for buttons. There's 25 in there and there's 40 buttons on the top. So we solder paste it up. Then we have to place the buttons by hand because if you use the pick and place machine, the buttons rotate. So it doesn't work. And that's labor intensive. Then it gets soldered, it comes off the solder and then you turn it upside down and you put all the pins in, two pins per button. And it's, um, it's a really slow process. Um, I had quotes to have them made in China and of course they were expensive because they recognize the, um, the work involved. So we do it ourselves, but we've been doing them now for a week and a half. <laughs> I think we've made a few thousand and um, we're just coming 
Well, they've all been made now. So they've been made, they've been snapped off into uh, 12s and they'll be getting bagged tomorrow. I hope we get them all done. So, because we've got to count out the screws into 24s, put screws in a bag, cables in a bag. Oh, I need to check that I've got cables as well. That's a thought. Imagine having a load of buttons and no cables. That'd be an emergency order on my... It's okay, we've got plenty of buttons in stock. But I'm just in boosting our stock levels at the moment because I'm anticipating um, a major overhaul to the way we work in the summer period when it's quiet. And I'll tell you about that when the time is right. Right now I'm just enjoying my therapeutic session of placing a few components in the knowledge that the laser cutter is doing its job. In fact, where's my phone? There. You can check on it. I've got cameras everywhere. I know you probably can't see anything, but there's the laser cutter doing its job right now. So I can keep an eye on that. Uh, we'll take the camera down there after as well. There we go. Put that where I can see it. And uh, get that done. It's two passes, so that's the first pass that I think will come to an end in about 40 minutes. And the reason it's two passes is I just want the highest possible quality out of it. So double the workload. More than double the opportunity for something to go wrong, <laughs> like it does. Um, but very rewarding. And I, uh, if I look at a panel and think, is that right? Then in my own mind, I've already answered the question. So if you have to ask, no. So I want perfect panels every time. So far we have been. I think the laser's what? Three, three, three and a bit years old. I was asking the guys yesterday about upgrades and stuff. So we're, um, they're sending me a quote for some attachments that would allow me to cut wood flawlessly without any residue or burn marks. So I'm absolutely keen to see what they come up with there. I think it's a, a different nozzle and a high pressure um, air feed. And the high pressure air feed will this time, instead of coming from the dedicated pump, it will come from my compressor down there. Which of course has been sat there all along being used for different things and uh, absolutely makes sense to use it for the uh, for the air assist as well. Right, how are we doing? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14. So I think with this I shall drop them into the oven and get the oven going. Oh, let's just, I can warm it up in a minute. I like to cycle the oven, not fully, but just get, get the, uh, the liquid above ambient temperature on the first run. After that, it's, of course, it's all warmed up. Just makes life easier for me. A few components were um, misplaced over the weeks or refused to place, rejected. So I've picked them out of the uh, parts bin on the pick and place and uh, place them by hand as well. Waste not, want not. All right, let's uh, spin this round, see if you can see anything. Back in a minute. I think that's the best angle I can get. So without moving the camera, and the problem is I want to put it back in a minute. So I'll just put these in carefully. Four across. I just made 25, so if I get 13 or more, then that's going to be two oven loads and get half in. And tomorrow when my daughter comes here to do the hand soldering, it's only power socket and two three pin connectors on these. They're uh, very fast to do. There we go. Drop that in. 
energized and it's on okay on with the rest I um, I've never suffered from hay fever and for the last couple of years I've developed colds when spring arrives and I'm starting to think that I might be suffering from hay fever. Uh, it's been nice and warm-ish, but dry. And I think the pollen count is just pushing it over. I'm sort of always aware of feeling bunged up. Oh, great. I just tipped all them out. So I think I'm joining the ranks of hay fever sufferers. So the next thing to do is see what medication is available but if it makes me drowsy well I don't think I can take it I'm drowsy enough as it is from um, I feel like I've uh, you know had other issues that <laughs> slowed me right down so what are we doing here that guy yeah spin it the right way round always push it the wrong way round and then replace it after that won't do And there's the DC, the DCC module. And have a look at one, see if you can focus on it. And pay attention. There it is, before it's been soldered. And when it comes out the oven, it will be beautiful. How's the oven doing? Looking good. What have you been up to then? Anything exciting? What have I got planned for this video? Um, so I'll finish these DCC modules off. Then we'll go down to the laser and we'll, um, we'll take a look at the uh, 900 mil panel. I've cut the enclosures for it, so that's all done. I've also got a 600 mil panel that the enclosures are done, cut. And um, I think we'll probably enjoy some therapeutic painting for me, it'll be over the weekend. For you, it'll be the same video, I think. Unless I change my mind. No warranty is implied or offered. Um, I don't know what you use for video editing, uh, or if you do. I use DaVinci Resolve. Um, I recently upgraded to version 17, and it's... I, I couldn't use it at first. I think it was about 18 months, two years ago. And it wouldn't run on my machine. I think I had 16 meg of RAM on the machine and it, I don't think it was enough. It's an absolute monster of, you know, a resource hog, but it's powerful. And I bought their video editing keyboard um, earlier on in the year. It's a small keyboard, Bluetooth or USB. And it's got a jog wheel, which is great. So you can spin around and just get to the bits you want fast. And it does improve the editing speed, even with a, a have-a-go guy like me. But the reason I bought the keyboard, I think the Resolve license was around about the 300 pound mark, I can't remember now. But you could buy the keyboard for the same amount. And if you bought the keyboard, it was on offer you got the license for free, which meant I could access the um, the other features as well, that the other features that I don't use or don't use yet. So I've now got a licensed version um, for free, but um, software is very good. What's my spec? It's I'm running, a, my office PC is an Intel Core i9 with a barge load of cores, 32 gig of RAM, two SSDs, and a pair of 4K monitors. And I shoot the video in 4K. So editing 4K video is, is a bit of an effort. I'll tell you what though, on, on the release of 17, uh, one of the best new features I found is you can uh, take your input media before you've edited it and you can tell, what's the phrase? I can't remember what the phrase is, but basically it'll 
cache it and make a low res copy of the file to whatever res you specify. And you think, well, why do you want to do that? And it's great because what you then do, ah, it's proxy, I think it's called proxy media. And what you do is you edit using the proxy media, which means it's really zippy and fast. It's the oven coming on. And then um, when you do the final render, it substitutes the, um, the full res media. And it's ingenious. Basically, I can apply edits and whiz round the jog wheel. And it's all in real time, even when I apply transitions, edits, or even have a bit of fun with other stuff. Um, it does it in real time, which is it's brilliant. Um, I think last time I ran it, I edited four blog videos in, in one go. So that would have been three hours nearly of video or across four videos. And uh, in the past it used to be a right chore, whereas now I can blast through it in no time. Um, I suppose the best edit is no edit but who'd want to sit and watch me do this all day? <laughs> Probably my wife, she needs to keep an eye on me. Uh, how are you working? Oh, do you know what was great yesterday? So I bought a new barbecue last month. It's one of those, uh, what do you call them? Um, Camado style, you might know it as an egg. This isn't an egg though, but it's, it's that style huge barbecue ceramic and for four for three weeks we had a barbecue every day suffice to say we're all barbecued out now and uh, <laughs> we're looking for other other food options but wow it's amazing where was I going with this so anyway we've um, we've been barbecuing the pants off everything and uh, my favorite is spatchcock chicken which is I don't know a, a flattened full chicken and uh, uh, being a, a heat seeker or techno whore whatever you want to call me because I have to have all the gadgets oh that's telling me the alarm the laser is due to finish let's have a look it's finished so I'll do these and we're going to tend to it in a minute. Stop moving. Um, so I bought, bought a thermometer, a regular thermometer. So I can measure, measure my food. And do you know what? I've never used a thermometer before and it's great. It takes all the guesswork out of whether it's done. But I've also bought this thing called, um, what's it called? Oh, here you go. I'll show you. Meter, that's it. Meter and thermometer. And what it is, it's a thermometer that connects to your phone through Bluetooth or through the cloud through another device, which I have. And then you can see your cook on your phone, even outside Wi-Fi range. So if I call up a previous cook, whole chicken. So it shows the charts of the temperature of the meat. And of course, there's no wires. And I thought, oh, that's a gimmick. I bought a cheap thermometer. Then I went back and thought, you know what, I'll have that. I've worked really hard, so toys for the boys and what have you. And I put this thermometer on and it's, I tell you now, it's way overpriced for what it is, but it's in half good. Um, so you tell it what you're cooking. So if I say uh, whole chicken, like that last cook, stick the probe in and you tell it how you want it done, whether it's medium or well or what have you. And it sits there and then it predicts the profile, the temperature rise of the, of the meat. It also measures the ambient temperature inside the barbecue and um, basically gives you an alarm five minutes before it's ready to say, uh, come and get it. And uh, that was fun. We had a barbecue the other weekend with a family round. So whilst it's cooking, this is the ultimate in <laughs> wasted resource, I suppose, but 
Yeah, you share a web link to your thermometer and you cook and it tells everybody how it's doing. That's how sad I am. Barbie's good though. I bought the, uh, the pizza dish for it. We had a couple of disasters with that, but we've got the hang of it now. Uh, it came with heat deflector plates and I also bought the cast iron griddle. I've never cooked on a cast iron griddle in a barbecue. It's the most used thing we have, it's brilliant. We do like um, a smash pork meat burger. So we buy the pork meat from the butcher and we, we put it on in a round bowl, squish it down on the griddle, barbecue away, and it just tastes great. And of course the icing on the cake is the uh, toasting the buns on it. So that's what I've been doing for the last few weeks. That and working, working my socks off making panels. So I think what we'll do now is we'll uh, relocate to the garage and I'll show you the, um, the first pass result of the uh, panel. If I can get all these in. Hang on, and these little buttons. I don't know why I use a little button on the DCC module. It's the only one only board I do I think I'll at some point I'll re-roll that with uh, with a bigger button so uh, come with me and we'll uh, can you hear me yep and see me so come with me and we'll uh, we'll go to the garage and we'll have a look at the panel so here's the panel after its first pass you may recognize it from previous videos where we were doing the artwork it's good old size so we'll just crank the air filter on and press go. Start, here we are. And we're off. Start with the logo, that's first. And in a few more hours, that'll be done and we can clean it up and see how that looks and I've got the camera monitoring it up there so I'll keep an eye on it and we can uh, see when the job's done so while I'm roaming with the camera I will uh, thought I'd just show you the buttons that we talked about before there's the buttons we made these are all now snapped into their um, 12s so we've got to make a load of packs of the screws and then we'll put the cables together. And this was a panel that came off the laser yesterday. Uh, it was the first one we made after it was serviced. So that's gonna look good. So these will be painted over the bank holiday weekend. Oh look, we've got no focus and there we are. So the, uh, the engraved feels good. I'm quite excited to get that painted. But of course I'm doing DCC modules at the moment. And I'm down to my last reel of 330 nanofarad caps. So we've got to order some more of those. So let's go back up to the uh, workshop. So we'll just recover, let's move this down, the DCC modules from the oven and put the second batch in. Oh, I don't need that glove because there's no high mass components, so the boards tend to cool down quickly. It's on the servo controllers and the multi-panels where you get the big uh, coil. That holds heat. Oh, right, eh? We'll have a look at those in a minute. Right, let's get this last slot in. It's, I can never do one thing at a time. I always seem to do lots of things at the same time. In some ways it's probably more efficient knowing that the laser is running while I'm doing something else, something else somewhere else. As long as I keep an eye on it, that's okay. I've got a few emails to reply to as well, so I'll probably do those after I've QA'd these or given them an initial look at. Right, I'll move the camera up and we can have a look at them together. I may have a flexible tripod, but blimey, it takes ages to reconfigure. 
And you see, yes, so these have just come out of the oven. Can we get focus? Come on, there we go. So that's it without the pins. Oh, there's pasta move there. Right, I'll have to fix that. That one looks good. That one looks good. I'm just looking for the placement of all components and any bridges on the microcontroller. The bridges are rare. That cap's moved. And that's moved. Okay, fix that. If I get a bridge across the microcontroller, uh, it usually means I've um, applied too much solder. Let's have a look. God, blimey, it's capacitors. Oh, that was before I fixed the issue on the pick and place machine. Now I'm paying the price for it. It's good. There were a lot of rectifiers in the uh, junk bucket, so I think for half of these I turned the placement of the rectifier off and put them on by hand. Just checking to make sure I did get them the right way around. Hmm. So what we're going to do with these is we've got some tombstones and a few caps not properly seated. And we're just going to turn them around with a little bit of heat treatment. So let's change the nozzle. Put a little nozzle on. Going to be noisy now. Let's get a wooden bed. Let this warm up. So let's see. If you look at this this capacitor, there's one here. But just not quite right, so we'll fix that. Uh, I don't normally get this many but it, the machine gave me a hard time. The, this resistor here by the uh, LED, that's the tombstone, so if, see it's sticking up, hold it that way. You see it's sticking up there. The reason that happens is, in the oven, um, there's a slight difference in when the salter melts, melts on either cap, on either end of the, the pad. So if it's not stuck, really um, evenly then when one end melts first or liquefies and the other end doesn't if it doesn't stick right it'll surface tension will pull the resistor up or the component and um, it's called the tombstone then for obvious reasons so you just have to uh, drop it back down it's an easy fix but it's an extra step all manufacturers do it you got a telly or whatever there'll be someone at the end of the line checking right can you see this yes so there's one here that's out of place so I use a hot air gun get some heat into the board and there we go slide it over Hot. Yep, burnt my fingers. Right, this guy is a tombstone here, so I'll just get the heat on the resistor, trying to avoid the LED. Almost impossible. Sorry, you can't see. I can't do it and film it. Down it goes. Done. This guy just wants to line up. Amazing how much heat's in, heat's in the air. I do live on this heat gun though, occasionally. Yeah, line up. The tombstone there and a misaligned component. Tombstone's fixed. And this guy.
a tombstone I'll fix. If it's anything more on a board, I'll just fail it because it, I, I regard it as not new then and it will get donated to my local club. We'll let those cool down. The oven's kicked in as well, so that's cooling. Okay, put these in the tray. I mentioned before about the buttons in the, the biscuit of 40. I've got, I see some there waiting to be finished. Let's show you one. So there's a load of buttons for a mimic panel and the pins are missing. So tomorrow when my daughter comes in, she'll stick all the pins in here and then I'll break those up and uh, they can go down and get bagged with the rest of them. So she's got one, two, five to do. And then that batch will be complete. Here we are back again. Let's get the second half of the DCC modules out. Whoops. He says almost knocking the camera off the bench. That would be fun having to buy another camera. Could do with another though. Okay. Shut that down. Right, let's bring you over and see what we've got here. Are you seeing it? Yep, you can see there. Right, what have we got? Hopefully a pristine load of examples of tombstone. Ah, oh, good one. One got through. Uh, don't be alarmed about the tombstones. It's, uh, we, I don't usually have this many, but there was an alignment issue with the, no, I'll just give that one a notch with the heat, with the pick and place machine. Uh, it wasn't behaving for a while. Um, so think of it as the usual Monday morning struggles, except it's Thursday. Oh, lovely. Um, when these are all assembled, then they'll go downstairs, put the software on, and every single one I attach to either my NCE power cab or my Signatrack DCC controller, and throw a point with it, usually a servo, it doesn't matter, just to test it. So they are, that's down, but it doesn't look right that. So they do get actually tested and it is tested against the DCC um, controller rather than just the, yeah, electrically that looks okay sort of thing. Just want to knock that one down a bit. And go down. Go down. Uh, that one, which one was it? it was just a, yeah, that one just doesn't look right, so I'll give that a bit of a touch. And on that one. Right. So I've only burnt myself twice today so far. Right, let's get that resistor. It's usually resistors or the small capacitors that tombstone. The bigger stuff tends not to. Um, probably because they're more affected by the surface tension. I don't know why it's also related to certain boards like the the relay drivers. They ne I never get tombstones on those, but um, certain boards are more prone to it than others. Maybe I just did a better job aligning the pick and place machine before, so I need to revisit that. But maybe, just maybe, later on this year we'll be upgrading that machine for. Uh, what would appear to be an absolute monster. 
so I can place the really fine components I'm thinking bigger MCUs as well as have room for all the components on the reels and instead of a shared feeder or with a common stepper motor that'll be uh, they'll be in car it'll be cartridge based which is the proper way to do it anyway and um, which one was it here just yeah that one I just want to give it a tweak this is only a cheap heat gun I bought off eBay ages ago and I thought I'll get it see if I like it and then if it's, if it's any good I'll get a good one like I did with the soldering iron and uh, <laughs> it's worked ever since right so that's 25 of them I'll keep Lucy busy tomorrow and we'll get those done as well should be busy with all those buttons but I'll I'll prioritise the DCC modules because we've got plenty of buttons in stock. What else can we do? Camera up. Oh yes. I take the camera off. Come to daddy. There we go. Right. Let's pick and place machine. Shut that down. So. I've got the menu off for some reason, there it is. So we'll just save that, shut it down, save again, yes. Close radio two, switch off. Dunk. And that's that for a while. So we're, uh, we're sorted on the um, DCC modules. Let's go and, ah, orders. Got to do the orders. What time is it? Half 12. Right, let's do the orders. Oh, and I want to check for cables for buttons. So, cables for buttons. Okay. Ah, yes, good. Got some of them. Have a look. Woohoo. So these are button cables. So that's good. And I've also got some buttons, uh, some cables for the um, remote setup, which we'll be making next week as well. So I'll get those done. Ah, all go here, you know. That's uh, another storeroom. Otherwise known as the bedroom. But I'll get the orders together and uh, we'll go do them. So uh, I'll see you in a minute in the post room.